When I first started thinking up how to review this, I was going to say that some franchises just don't work as fighting games, but the more I thought about it, the more I don't actually feel that way. Tons of games have worked great as fighters, and if the game fails, it's usually not because a franchise or characters were used that just didn't work in a fighter. I mean, look at all the characters that Netherrealm threw into Injustice and Mortal Kombat. I mean, Capcom even put Frank West and Phoenix Wright in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and if you can make those guys fun, then anything is possible. I think more so that it's the gameplay itself that ends up making the game fail, and that's the case with today's game, Star Wars Masters of Terras Kasi on the PlayStation. So the story goes, and be prepared to suspend some disbelief in this, the Emperor wants to retaliate for the destruction of the Death Star, so he recruits some chick named Arden Lin to fight against the Rebels in the unarmed combat discipline of Terras Kasi. It's a 3D fighter where you'll see Luke fight Leia, Han take on Darth Vader. Fun but completely unlikely matchups like that. Terrace Kasi came out in 1997 on the PlayStation, a couple years before Episode 1, so the very limited roster didn't have all the new characters to add yet. All your favorite OG characters you loved before they were ruined by Disney and Jar Jar Abrams are here. Luke and Leia, Darth Vader, Han, Chewbacca, Boba Fett, one of those pig guys that got eaten by a Rancor in Return of the Jedi, and a Tusken Raider named Hor. Whore. 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 There are some unlockable characters also, and I'm using air quotes as I say that, but they're just reskins with the same move sets as the starting roster. The Stormtrooper has the same move set as Han, Mara Jade has the same move set as Luke, etc. LucasArts deserves credit for at least getting most of the major players in this, but the roster still feels really small. It would have been cool to see Obi-Wan, Lando, heck, throw in one of those red Imperial guys if you're gonna add in the clunky Stormtrooper and whore. Whore! Whore. 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 Or Kyle Katarn and Jarek from Dark Forces 2. That game in particular was released a month beforehand, and adding them from it actually could have helped to promote both games. I know they only had the original trilogy and books from the extended universe back then, but you still had a lot of characters to add. I mean, throw an Ewok in there too. I'm sure plenty of people would have wanted to smack an Ewok around with a lightsaber. Maybe Yoda and an Ewok. Who doesn't love watching midgets fight? So speaking of lightsabers, this is where for me the wheels really started coming off. You have a game that revolves around an unarmed fighting style, but then the characters can all still use weapons. Like at any time you can hit a particular button and your character will whip out their lightsaber or blaster or whatever. Doesn't that defeat the purpose of this whole fight to begin with? Also, if you're a Jedi and you pull out a lightsaber, shouldn't the fight be over with after like one hit? There should be pieces of these people dropping all over the place if one of the fighters has a lightsaber. On top of that, shouldn't I be able to reenact that scene from Raiders with Indy, I mean Han, pulling out his gun to blast his opponent when they start doing their moves? With the exception of two Jedi fighting each other, these fights should be done in a couple of seconds. This also has ring outs, so why can't the Jedi just force push everybody off the edge to their deaths? It's like putting Superman in a fighting game where we all know in the back of our heads that he could just throw everybody into the sun if he wanted to. So the moves in this are really bland. You have to do a series of Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat style button presses to do simple things like stab with your weapon or swing your weapon while moving to the side, or even to just fire a gun. Do you really need to do a sequence of button presses to squeeze a freaking trigger? And the controls can be pretty unresponsive on top of that, so when you try to pull all of this crap off, you don't actually get them to work most of the time. And when they do work, they're so boring that you won't actually know if you did the move correctly or not. All of this combined with characters that move pretty sluggishly, there's infinite juggles, and some moves that have totally unbalanced damage when they do connect, and it takes a lot of the fun out of the game. At least in my experience, the game is kind of difficult even on the easiest setting. Or cheap. You can probably use cheap as well. Also rage-inducing. 
In order to get things unlocked, you'll have to play on the standard difficulty, which is called Jedi, and I had to basically travel the corners of each stage and wait for the opponent to fall off so I'd get a ring out, otherwise going toe-to-toe -to -toe against the computer usually meant I was getting stomped several times because the ways you could juggle and basically cheese your opponent without giving a chance to retaliate were abundant in this. The computer makes good use of this, and I got pretty tired of losing. So for me, the ring out strategy would work about a third of the time, but it was better than nothing. As you can tell, the graphics weren't great, even back then. Like, if you want a comparison, I think Tekken 2 probably looks better, and the PlayStation version of that game came out a year earlier. But really, you can't be surprised by that. It's not like you're going to get Soul Calibur quality Darth Vader or something. Anyways, the characters more or less look like their movie counterparts, but obviously they're going to be blockier and where their limbs connect, it kind of looks like old G.I. Joe action figures. The stages are pretty ugly too and have about the same detail as Virtua Fighter 1, which came out four years earlier, but who's keeping track, right? To the game's credit though, you'll fight in locations from the movies like the Carbonite Chamber, Cloud City, and Hoth. To make the footage a little bit more interesting, I use the big head cheat, because why not? Big heads are funny. The game's soundtrack plays the same couple of songs from the movies repeatedly, which is fun at first, but after a while, the music does get a little samey and the fun wore off. That said, I do think the music is probably the best thing about this game, and you can thank John Williams for that. The characters all have a catchphrase they use when they win, like Luke saying, easier than shooting womp rats back home, or Boba Fett saying, I'd better be getting paid for this. I certainly feel that way. But my favorite was probably Chewbacca going, <laughs> What a Wookiee, am I right? So did I enjoy Terrace Kasi? No, of course not. It didn't do anything to hurt the Star Wars brand, which is pretty great by today's standards, but it also made for a pretty crappy, ugly, and unbalanced fighter, and now that i finally played it, I know why it stank worse than fresh Bantha turds when it came out. I feel like this game should have been hard to screw up, and would have worked better as an arena fighter, or even with a closer fighting system to Mortal Kombat 4. The whole unarmed thing should have been totally omitted, and they should have just focused on creating something that controlled well and was fun. And that's why I can still go back to Tekken 1 and enjoy it, is because it still has both of those things going for it. That is another one in the can. What's next as Bad Game Summer continues to burn? Tune in next week and find out. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>